So let me take a guess at this. You saw the title of this episode and you fully expected a British car freak like myself to drone on for a couple of minutes of your day about how magnificent a Morgan is. So let's dispense with it right at the top. It's beyond magnificent. So now that we got the obvious out of the way, we're going to spend the rest of this episode not making a subjective case about a British sports car by the name of a Morgan Plus Four, rather an objective case, including financials, for a British sports car by the name of a Morgan Plus Four, for broken car guys and gals on this side of the Atlantic in North America. The number you have dialed has been changed. The new number is... Please note, the new number is... Okay, now that we got that out of the way, let's try out the original definition of a hybrid American power British body and chassis. Straight up hill. Incredibly good day at the office this is going to be. Okay, so uh, there is some dispute of whether this is 180 horsepower or 183 or 195. I don't care really what it is, and hopefully you can hear me. <laughs> There's plenty of power. God, this is good! You won't be surprised to learn that the underside is about as traditional as the shiny side of a Morgan Plus 4. The rear is a live axle to front. Perhaps the term suspension is a bridge entirely too far. The best way to describe it is to go back to your Cub Scout days when you would attach plastic wheels using nails or screws to a block of wood and call it a Pinewood Derby car. Here Morgan goes ahead and attaches some shocks to the front of the car, but they're really not there to improve the ride quality. I'd say they're more for window dressing. So any discussion of driving dynamics in a Morgan Plus 4 is about situations like this. Even on a road that is the equivalent of glass. You're going to get some undulations in the driving character of the vehicle because the suspension is so stiff. Now one could argue that is the driving characteristic of a Morgan high speed or low speed, but that argument would be wrong. Because remember, not the chassis, the frame is made of wood, which means the driving characteristics change over time as the wood settles. Yes, it is indeed that time again to play your favorite game in mind, the options game with today's contestant, a 1965 Morgan. That cannot be right. Uh, and indeed, it is not. What that is is a 2019 Morgan Plus 4 Tribute 1965 component build car. Now, two very important notes before we get into what is going to be the most unusual round of the options game. Number one, you can't buy that legally in the US. What you buy is a component, really a kit car, uh, without an engine, basically a rolling chassis, uh, and then you make it into a real car. And number two, all of the numbers I'm going to share with you are in reality numbers from Morgan's UK website. All I've done is the FX as of July 9th, 2019. So with that, let's dive in and if you thought the recent rounds with Mercedes and Porsche were bad, wow, you're in for a treat. Payment to Morgan Company for rolling chassis ending 2710, $63,911. To that, we add a Ford 2-liter federal specification engine with a Mazda 5-speed transmission for $18,174. Uh, then we get into Morgan-specific options. Four wheels. Yes, wheels. Uh, 15 inches black alloy, $1,958. Moving from the bottom to the top, traditional nine stud hood, which means two things. Number one, if you are not a loyal subject of Queen Elizabeth Regina, hood means roof. And number two, traditional nine stud means it is much harder to put the roof up and down, 594 additional dollars. Adjustable shock absorbers, $472. May I add, they are not adjusted by a button on the dash, they are adjusted by putting the car up in the air and getting wrenches out. Air conditioning is an additional $2,702. Moving on to anti-tramp bars fitted. Gonna leave that one right there, $337. A baby doll front valence. That's free. Blue carpeting, $202. Brake reaction bars, $94. Clear indicated lamps that are not installed, $81. 
stainless steel chassis covers, $88. Leather door pockets with a contrasting leather color at the top where it's the elasticized portion, $467. Door check straps fitted in stainless steel and polished, $236. Footwell lighting, $101. Heated seats, $540. Those you need, I use them a lot. Believe it or not, we're nowhere near being done. And I'm thinking this is taking a bit long. So let's go do some driving and then circle back to the options game later in the episode. So before we try this, I'm gonna tell you something you're not gonna believe. Discs in the front, drums in the rear. Yes, those drums in the rear. With that, let's try this, but please do not try it at home. Okay. Um, it doesn't make a difference in terms of stopping power. As a matter of fact, as you saw, there is more stopping power than the smaller wheels and tires can handle. Then there's drivability of the brakes around town, and that's where we get into the position of the pedal itself. It is attached to the floor like an old-timey race car. So there is a, a learning curve when you get into a Morgan. This is where we get into the ridiculously low weight here, paying some dividends, because you can modulate with slight pressure from your foot. Braking like this, it's not available anywhere in 2019. Yeah, you could buy a kit car or a track car, but not something you're gonna buy and drive on the road. The car you're looking at is fitted with nine stud roof. Uh, it's called as such because there are nine studs that fix the canvas to the A-pillar. And to call it a roof is perhaps a bit ambitious. I would say it is the automotive equivalent to an umbrella. It will provide some protection from the elements, enough for you to get the car back to a proper garage. Now I know for the past 10 years I've been beating you up that a proper car is made in a shed in the southeast of England. Uh, this, not exactly from that region, it still qualifies as a proper car because it is indeed made in a shed, uh, but instead of the southeast of England, it is made in the Midlands, as proven by what they call side curtains that are made of plexiglass. Plexiglass. And this one really gave Kumo a chuckle, rubber floor mats. Over the carpeting, $135. Speakers, CD unit, and aerial fitted. Yes, it has an antenna, $472. That's quite a bargain. A start button to start the car is extra, $303. Leather sun visors, also extra, but lovely, $162. Body in metallic silver, $1,343. Your eyes do not deceive you. That is indeed a two-tone car. You do have to pay an extra charge for it. And the parts that are painted in the other color, in this case black, are called the wings, $1,419. Now for this next option, I do need to share with you that I drove this car over the July 4th weekend, which makes $81 criminal for Union Jack badges, even if they are enameled in a lovely blue and red. Uh, then wing beating in blue, $270. I have no idea what that is. Waterproof leather, which I think is important in the Morgan because I wouldn't call these things waterproof or watertight. $1,688. Uh, stitching in royal blue, free. Carpets having scarlet welting. Again, I have no idea what that is. $202. White exhaust tips, free. Uh, back panel in louvered spare wheel opening cover, $317. Uh, wing mounted side lights, $338. And a chrome interior rear view mirror. How much do you think it is? You're wrong, it's free. Pair of round exterior door mirrors, that is $230. Club Sport Exhaust, Sport Exhaust System, Catalytic Converters, $1,924. Blue leather door top, $68. Blue leather dash top, which looks incredible, $445. If you're reading the tea leaves correctly, you see where this is going, and now you really understand what a bespoke built car is. 
However, you're expecting a delivery charge and the final price, yet there's one major option you are not considering and we absolutely need to make it do what we did in this episode. And that is get someone to put the engine in the car. That would cost $14,707. <laughs> Bringing the total price to $114,000. $958. In this, you don't so much as steer, you aim this thing. So here's what I find so fascinating about this unassisted system, especially in today's day and age of variable assist e-pass systems. Uh, the fear is when you get up to speed without any sort of assist, even the light car, there's going to be vague on center field. Here, not the case at all. The, the balance that comes through the steering, the feel that comes to the steering is to a level of perfection, perhaps that was well sorted in 1952. Remember objective case, including financials at the top of this episode? Well, the following is going to blow your mind. Let's say for the sake of discussion, we had the choice back in 2014 to buy either a brand new Morgan Roadster or a brand new moderately equipped Porsche 911 convertible. Neither one would be a bad choice. But let's say for the sake of discussion, we go back to 2019 and want to sell either one of those cars. The Porsche we would sell today for about 60,000 US dollars. The Morgan we'd sell anywhere between 125 and 135,000 dollars. Yes, a lot less of the Morgans were sold, so the sample size is pretty small. But considering these numbers, which one from an objective depreciation standpoint is the better business case, even for us broken car guys and gals? I almost feel this is an incredibly bad decision. Our top secret torture chamber that is Portuguese Bend, otherwise known as Earthquake Zone. But here we go, stiffest car we've driven in a long time. Santa Maria Madre de Dios! Oh my God. Okay, and this is where it's been repaved and we're still going up and down. Oh my God, this is more of a roller coaster than a car. Oh God, hold on for dear life. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, even on a bad road, you can't help but giggling like a schoolgirl. But now let's get back to the perfectly paved part where we have a roller coaster. Oh, whoa, and a little bit of air. How can you beat a Morgan? Admittedly, that round of the options game was a hell of a lot of fun, but we do need to circle back to a ridiculously important point about the case of buying a Morgan in the US. Now, 15 grand to have someone put the engine in your kit car, couldn't you just save all the time, money, and therapy for yourself and do it yourself? And the answer to that is no. You see, Morgan, they've decided that the cars that come to the US they're the only ones that are gonna mandate where the engines are put in their cars. Now, if I'm reading the tea leaves correctly, what they're really saying is, we don't want you to go find some 500 horsepower crate motor and put it in our 2000 pound car. The following is a public service announcement. And I am dead serious when I say this. Everyone that wants to get a driver's license in any developed nation needs to learn how to drive in a Morgan. Here's why. It's a car, man. It ain't a spaceship. It ain't a computer. There's nothing helping you to drive or get out of bad situations. You got to figure out how to drive it. You got to figure out how much brake pressure, how much input on the steering. And oh, by the way, if there's inclement weather and you have less traction, you got to figure out how to modulate the traction. Not laughing now, are you? So here's my argument, everyone, that wants to learn how to drive a car in a developed nation should do so in a Morgan. And the payoff is we can have a road full of much better and much safer drivers. Am I crazy or am I spot on? Let me know why or why not and what region of the world you hail from. Let me know in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV, all in word, Moto Man TV, all in word. With that, Santa Maria Madre de Dios, Thank you, Lord, for bringing this into my life. Something unexpected happened in my time with the Morgan Plus 4. 
You see, the last time we drove one of these things was 10 years ago. And yes, it was a special car back then, but let's be honest, it's a car that hasn't been changed ostensibly since 1952. Fast forward to today, and this stunning silver and black quintessential British Roadster is, yes, even more intoxicating, but that is not what weighs on your brain as you walk away after driving it. Instead, you can't help but thinking about the pace of change in the car world around the Morgan since we last drove a Morgan. You see, it was in those same 10 years that every single car on the road has become a technological tour de force supercomputer on four wheels. Which brings us to a point I cannot overstate. There are less and less things like this than there were 10 years ago, which makes things like this, in today's world of 2019, even more special.